Hello, and welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection, reporting real issues that matter to you. I'm Jeff Morales. And I'm Angelo Knox. Thank you for joining us. Here are today's top stories. President-elect Donald Trump has begun selecting candidates to fill positions in his cabinet. According to the New York Times, the following positions have been filled. For Secretary of Education, Trump has called upon Betsy Davos, a wealthy Republican activist from Michigan. The Attorney General position has been given to Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, who was denied a federal judgeship for racist comments. The White House Chief of Staff position will be entrusted to RNC Chairman Reince Priebus. Finally, Trump's chief strategist will be former Breitbart CEO Stephen K. Bannon. Bannon has been accused of racism in the past. Some candidates will require Senate approval before they can assume their new positions. Protesters at Standing Rock continue to face trials as military rise police fire rubber bullets, launch tear gas, and deploy water cannons in sub-freezing temperatures. These extreme measures have come to lead to extreme injuries, such as Sofia Wanzlonski, whose left arm was struck by a concussion grenade and now requires multiple surgeries. 2,000 U.S. veterans have since volunteered to defend peaceful protesters from assault and intimidation. However, the U.S. Army Corps has announced the eviction of the main encampment by the 5th of December, citing federal regulations governing public lands and public safety. The recent passage of Measure M makes way for new public transit projects. The half-cent sales tax increase will accelerate already shovel-ready projects, like the rail line to LAX, a subway under the Sepulveda Pass, and a Purple Line extension to Westwood. The measure will also fund many rail line extensions, including the Green Line extension to Redondo Beach, the Gold Line extension to South Imani, and possible Crenshaw Line extensions. The measure will also fund a recent plan to build a new light rail system that will connect Union Station to Artesia via lines running through the southeast sector. Funds will also go to improve many transportation infrastructure issues throughout LA County. The sales tax increase takes effect July 1, 2017. Shareholders of Elon Musk Tesla Motors Incorporated have voted in favor of a $2 billion acquisition of Solar City Corp, a rooftop solar panel installer, according to Bloomberg.com. All electric motor company made the move to become a clean energy producer in an effort to attract consumers who wish to be rid of fossil fuel consumption completely. Consumers will soon be able to purchase solar roofing tile prototype that have the ability to charge Tesla's all electronic vehicles in garages and Tesla's power wall battery, which will have power to energize homes. Recently, the U.S. Secretary of Education, John B. King Jr., urged state leaders to discontinue the archaic method of corporal punishment in schools. Currently, spanking, paddling, and hitting students as a form of discipline is still allowed in 22 states, despite statistical research evidence from psychologists proving that physical violence is an ineffective form of punishment. However, Donald Trump's newly appointed chief strategist, Steve Bannon, disagrees and believes that spanking children is a healthy form of discipline. He is quoted in saying, I've got a cure for the mental health issue. Spank your children more. Two years later, and Flint, Michigan residents still lack safe drinking water. Recently, a federal judge ordered the state of Michigan to begin weekly delivery of four cases of bottled water per resident to the homes of Flint residents for the foreseeable future. Households that opt out have been verified having properly maintained water filter are exempt. Governor Rick Snyder's administration filed a court motion in attempt to block the judge's order, arguing that the state already providing bottled water at distribution centers, and this order will cost taxpayers $10 million per month. Angelo, I hear you took a trip to Koreatown recently. I did. It was amazing. There was delicious food. Um, I met a couple new friends. Let's take a look. Check it out. Hey, I'm standing in the middle of Los Angeles in one of the most popular up-and-coming neighborhoods. It's a little slice of Asia, no passport required, Koreatown. English speakers don't even realize the Korean signage that they drive past every day. Take a look at it. This is the middle of Los Angeles, and all these signs are in Korean. Pretty amazing. So our question is, what do you think of Koreatown? Well, actually, uh, since been here in Koreatown for such a long decades, uh, 
what I'm saying is actually the most of the integration of the Korean back culture is actually residing in this area. And then if you go any kind of little uh, the road and the corner, etc., actually you can see and, and smell the, all the Korean back culture. Actually, they are kind of really first time is shy, but it's actually they are so active inside. So if you start a kind of communicating with them, then actually you can draw them into real American fusion culture. So that will be another kind of a good thing. And then also as long as, uh, you know, this day, all the Korean activity is going kind of going wild and then, you know, spread in the whole internationally. So I think Korea at a especially LA town is a kind of a real good example to know and learn and communicating with the Korean community. It's old Koreatown and now we're going to take a look at a new Koreatown. This is a mall filled with coffee shops, grocery stores, restaurants, a lot of young people hang out here. There's a movie theater upstairs. Let's go take a look inside. K-Town has K-Town culture. Korea, K-Town yeah, yeah. has K-Town culture. Yeah. So everyone right now is saying that K-Town that K is the number one neighborhood to live in in LA because of the food, yeah. the culture, yes. and the coffee shops. They all love it. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So do you agree with them? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Okay, I do too. I oh, do too. You like Koreatown? Yes, yes. Yay. Yes. Wow. As you can see, I had an awesome time. Um, definitely going to be making my way back to that part of town as soon as possible. <laughs> I think we'll have to join you. <laughs> yeah, you're more than welcome to. More from LACC TV after the break. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, B, console her, Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mm, Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to LACC TV. We have Marcella Lascano here with us for entertainment. Marcella. What do you got for us today? Well, guys, um, Kanye West still remains at the UCLA Medical Center after a week he was taken in on a 5150 psychiatric hold. According to TMZ, Kanye's doctor called 911 and told cops he was suffering from a temporary psychosis brought by sleep deprivation and extreme dehydration. He attempted to assault a staff member at his personal trainer's home. People are now speculating his long stay at the hospital shows a much deeper issue. His erratic behavior at his concert in Sacramento ended short after a long rant that included Trump, Jay-Z, and Beyonce. The remaining dates of his U.S. St. Pablo tour have since been canceled. Kim Kardashian has remained by his bedside. Just 
Zutsu, one of the most exciting shows created in Los Angeles, returns this winter. The Center Theater Group will be performing Zutsu at the Mark Taper Forum. The play is set in the barrios of Los Angeles in the early 1940s against the backdrop of Zutsu riots and World War II. Writer and director Luis Valdez is bringing Zoot Suit to celebrate the Center Theatre's group's 50th anniversary. Nearly 40 years after its world premiere, 25 actors, singers, and dancers portray the events surrounding the infamous 1942 Sleepy Lagoon murder. International stage and screen star Damien Bicker of Tarantino's The Hateful Eight and Showtime's Weeds is set to play the indelible role of El Pachuco. Tickets to Zoot Suits are available online at the www.centertheatergroup.org. The lively play runs January 31st through March 12th, 2017. A controversy arose after President-elect Donald Trump accused Hamilton cast of harassment. U.S. Vice President-elect Mike Pence, after performance one evening, the actors called on Pence to uphold our American values. Mike Pence was greeted by a mix of boos and cheers by the audience when he arrived at the Richard Rogers Theater in New York City. During the curtain call, Brandon Victor Dixon, who plays Aaron Burr, said Vice President-elect, I see you walking out, but I hope you will hear us. We have a message for you and encourage the audience to pull out their phones and share the following message. Vice President-elect Pence, we welcome you and we truly thank you for joining us here at Hamilton and American Musical. We really do. We, sir, we are the diverse America who are alarmed and anxious that your new administration will not protect us. Our planet, our children, our parents, or defend us and uphold our inalienable rights, sir. But we truly hope that this show has inspired you to uphold our American values and to work on behalf of all of us. All of us. Pence said he wasn't offended and that he didn't want an apology, calling Hamilton an incredible production and saying of the audience mixed reaction to his appearance, that's what freedom sounds like. Lots of great stuff this holiday um, season. Um, are you guys going to go check out any of the plays that are going to be in L.A.? Looks like good stuff. I always wanted a Zoot Zoot costume myself as a kid. I think you'll look pretty sharp in it. I think it'd be fun. You should try it next Halloween. I'm hoping <laughs> if I see the Hamilton play, they might have a message out for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> Green Party presidential nominee Jill Stein has threatened to sue the state of Wisconsin election community if a recount of votes was not conducted manually. Stein put a case forward in the Dane County Circuit Court, but if she's unsuccessful, then the officials in charge of Wisconsin's 72 counties will be allowed to decide if they recount by hand or machine. State officials are expecting to recount to confirm Donald Trump's victory. Hillary Clinton's campaign has also stepped forward, indicating it would also take part in the recount process in Wisconsin as well, if potential recounts in Michigan and, P and Pennsylvania. Making assumptions about small matters is not a cause for concern. But what about the way drugs affect our bodies? A University of California Irvine researcher is blowing the whistle on the way scientists study medication effects between men and women. Neurobiologist Larry Cal says under the current method, researchers generalize how men and women's brains react to drugs by ignoring fluctuating hormone levels of women. As a result, drugs that have been put into production are less effective on women. With the NFL heading down its final stretch of regular season, one team stands ahead above its shoulders of all. We now return to Darren McCoy for the most of NFL's most dominant team. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, the talk around the NFL this year is all about the Dallas Cowboys and whether or not they can win the Super Bowl despite their apparent deficiency on the defensive side of the ball. With the 10-1 Red Hot Cowboys being led by two rookies, quarterback Dak Prescott and running back Ezekiel Elliott, the media focus has been mainly on the Dallas offense. But as the late Bear Bryant said, defense wins championships, and the Gal Cowboys need to improve on defense. Their ability to win the battle of time possession, which TeamRankings.com claims the Cowboys are ranked second in the NFL with 32 minutes, 32 seconds per game, is seen by many as their poor defense is saving grace. Yet this Cowboys defensive unit has done its part to help Dallas sit atop the NFL standings, stepping up during key moments, whether it be an interception in the end zone, 
a goal line stand, or a key play to for, uh, force fourth down, Dallas defense seem, seems to play big when pressed. But injuries and an inconsistent pass rush has hurt this defense's effectiveness. Currently, the Cowboys rank 21st in total defense. They are third in rushing defense, but a lowly 29th against the pass. So the question is, can the Cowboys win a Super Bowl ring with a below average defense? This remains to be seen, but my money is on them boys and the Dak and Zeke show. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Darren. So what do you think? Is the defense going to come through? I think the offense is going to overcompensate for the, their lack of defensive secondary. So I think they have, that's my pick this year, I think they have a leg legitimate shot uh, at winning the Super Bowl. Okay. Wow, okay. seems like the Cowboys are carrying one big deck. Yeah. <laughs> Shopping for the holiday season is a sport all on its own, especially if you're looking for that perfect gift. So why not keep it local and shop close to LACC? Reporter Chandra Major takes us shopping on Melrose. Jeanette Bras, where the alphabet begins with D, has over 20 vendors from Belgium, France, and England, giving the full cup woman a truly luxurious experience. Do I import bras from Europe, and they're specifically for women with a full bust, and the quality and the design is absolutely amazing. Across from LACC on Heliotrope Drive in Melrose, Jeanette Bras, where the alphabet starts at D, caters to the full cup woman. Jeanette opened the store in 2009 after she returned from Europe where she found bras that fit her frame. Impressed with the quality fabric, she wanted to give American women the same experience. But I felt that if you had a full bust, you would spend the money on a, a product that was valuable, it was well made, and it was beautiful. With an exquisite eye for detail, Jeanette handpicks every item and knows every stitch. Oh, well, this, is, this piece is really incredible. And this is a basque, like for a wedding. Uh, this one is uh, inspired by our deco. And then this is 100% um, silk cami. Customers have spacious fitting rooms where they are sized for a perfect fit. Bunny ears, nightshades, and European catalogs full of handmade options make Jeanette's bras, where the alphabet starts at D, a great place for discerning customers. Reporting for LACC TV, I'm Chandra Major. Wow, Chandra really gave us some great information right there, didn't she? I think I know where I'm uh, picking up some stuff for my girlfriend for the holidays. <laughs> Good job. Coming after the break, Velvet comeback, and we get a closer look at the Rams' new stadium. Meet Matt. Because Matt exercises, he's able to reap its many benefits, which include weight control. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Improved mood. How's your day going, Matt? Fantastic. More energy. 98, 99, 100. And better sleep. What the heck are you still doing in here? Get out. Become a witness for your fitness.
Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. For thousands of years, chess has been a popular way to stretch one's mental capabilities. We now turn to Chess Talk with Tyler Chatfield for more on this classic game. Good evening, and welcome to another rousing episode of Chess Chat. As always, I am your host, Tyler Chatfield. Tonight, we will be speaking with a local chess enthusiast, Eric Skippings, about his relationship to the great game of chess. Thank you for joining us this evening, Eric. Thank you for having me. Now, Eric, how did your relationship with the game of chess begin? Uh, you know, when I was a kid, my father had a chess set in our uh, living room that I never knew how to play, but I would break it constantly. And one day I woke up, I said, you know what, I'm going to teach myself. I was living in the Caribbean, there's nothing else to do there. Uh, and like any relationship, it took time and patience, but it was worth it. It is pretty abusive because I do get beaten quite a lot, but great relationship. I, uh, I, I too began my chess journey with my father and on my, my third time ever playing, I, I beat my dad. Oh, wow. Did, uh, did you ever play your father? No, we actually never played. I've never seen him touch a chess set, so I don't know why it was there, but I'm glad it was. Now, what, uh, what about chess appeals to you? Uh, that moment when your opponent realizes that it's game over, uh, you know, they, they see it, and in their mind they're thinking, wait, I can make one more move. No, I planned for that five moves ago. It's game over. That, that is the best feeling, when, when you know they've fallen into your trap. Yeah. Every, you, you have every move set up, you have every piece in place, and they, they're just oblivious. Exactly. It's, it's fantastic. It's magical. Now, when you, when you start a game, do you prefer to start out as white or black? Uh, I prefer black because before moving to Los Angeles, I used to play with an old man who became some of my mentor, and the deal was if I could get a draw, playing as black, he would give me ten thousand dollars. <laughs> wow! I, it's usually pretty tough to make money playing chess. I, that's that's quite an offer. Did uh, did you did you? I, I tried weekly. I tried, and I remember one day I woke up. I said, "You know what? This is going to be the day." And that was the day I lost, I think, the fastest. Oh, man. You think he, if you ever had succeeded, you think he even had the money to pay you? Oh, he did. Oh, it he was, did? He was a big-time investor who traveled the world. Uh, my biggest regret right now is that I did not find that one move that would have put him away. Oh, man. What a shame. Yeah. Now, do you have a specific strategy you employ in your chess game? Uh, I always try to go for the castling first. But uh, the Faulkner counter gambit, definitely one of my favorite moves. It could end the game right away. I, I, I didn't realize, before I learned about defenses and openings, I was, in tune, ah, I was always using the uh, French defense. Uh, it just came to me. I thought it was the smartest one. Then I was taught about it, and I said, oh, okay. I guess I'll keep using it. The, those maneuvers are uh, they're quite effective. I, I love castling myself. I, you got you to keep that king protected. Exactly. Now, do you, do you prefer to castle on the queen side or the king side? Uh, I always try king side, but if the need arrives, you know, queen can be, can be have, have advantages. King side keeps it in a little tighter. Exactly. It's, 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 it is the better option. Now, when you play chess, which piece gives you the most headaches? Definitely the bishop. You know, the, uh, the knight can give you a bit of a fork, you know, attack two pieces at once. But as my mentor, he used to tell me a story when he lived in New York about a man named Chico. Chico would play chess with everyone on the block and he had this big belly. And every time Chico would pin a piece with the bishop, he'd say, what do Chico say? The pin, she win. <laughs> <laughs> chess jokes. Yeah. Oh. Did you hear the one about the king and the queen? I did not. Good. It's a dirty one. Oh. <laughs> So, um, have you seen any cool chess sets that have uh, blown your mind recently? I'm, I'm waiting for that wizard chess set, you know? Uh, as a kid, I loved seeing that, the, the first Harry Potter movie when they had that chess set. Oh, yeah. Even if it's just virtual, I need to see that. I, when I was young, I had a, my grandmother came back from England on a trip and she brought me a chess set that was Robin Hood. Oh, wow. It, it was intricate and very well made and it was great. Oh, that's great. Well. Eric, thank you for uh, joining us this evening. Well, any time I can talk about chess is a good time. Thank you. That's all the time we have tonight for Chess Chat. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in this evening. 
I hope to see you all next week when I sit down with the ghost of Bobby Fischer. Until then, I'm Tyler Chatfield. Good night. Sydney's Taronga Zoo is celebrating its first baby echidnas, or puggles as they are better known, in almost 30 years. The three babies hatched from their eggs in August and have now opened their eyes and are developing spines characteristic of their species. Echidnas are only one of two Australian mammals that lay eggs. The other is the duck-billed platypus. The baby echidnas hatch after 10 days and are carried around by their mothers in a pouch-like skin fold up for two months. Do you miss that soft, smooth, luxuri luxurious fabric that you can run your fingers through? If so, you're in luck because velvet has made a comeback as the new fashion trend for the fall winter season. Velvet is a very sexy, versatile material that is trendy enough to be worn dressed up or down. So be sure to add velvet to your winter wardrobe and all your friends will be impressed with your style and you will be a guaranteed success. Owner Stan Kroenke and the Los Angeles Rams recently broke ground on their 70,240-seat stadium. Located in Inglewood at the former Hollywood Park site, the stadium will be surrounded by a development that includes a performance venue, hotel, hundreds of thousands of square feet for retail and offices, homes, and a lake with waterfalls and fountains. Rams officials have already been in talks about hosting future Final Fours, possible college football championship games, and playing a role in the 2024 Olympic bid. Initially, there were concerns as opposers claimed possible issues with LAX radar systems. But Cranky assures us that those issues have been worked out. The stadium is scheduled to open for the 2019 NFL season and will host the Super Bowl in 2021. Have you been curious about which cities in the U.S. are most compassionate? According to a new statistical research study from UCaring analysts found that the 10 most compassionate U.S. cities are Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Atlanta, Salt Lake City, Seattle, Midland, Texas, Charleston, Pittsburgh, Orlando, Denver, and Miami. October 19th marked the final performance of a very popular Los Angeles-based comedy show. LACC-TV reporter Alex Stein was on site to tell us more. Immediate reward or a later reward? Delayed gratification. Exactly what is it? And is there a better option? Here is Jim Harvey with his take on delayed gratification. Thank you, Angelo. Delayed gratification is the ability to resist the temptation for an immediate reward and wait for a later reward. There's a growing body of literature which has linked the ability to delay gratification to a host of positive outcomes such as academic success, physical health, psych psychological health, and social competence. Social and current media trends are teaching people to expect instant gratification. The ideal of working for a better job earned through working from the bottom up agitates people in today's society. People with the ability to delay reports that they have a better esteem, self-esteem, and the openness to new experience as well as more productive ways of responding to anger and other provocations. Delayed gratification does have its limits and, on and can only go so far before it is considered not worth the effort it takes to wait. Without a reward that is meaningful, delayed or immediate gratification serves no purpose as the reward is not strong enough to motivate the pursuit of the desired goal. It has been shown that learning to delay gratification promotes positive and social behaviors, such as sharing and positive peer interactions. When someone learns the long-term benefits of delayed gratification, they're better equipped to complete assignments. Simply put, if someone takes on an activity with the promise of a delayed reward afterwards, the completion of the assignment becomes their new reality. I'm Jim Harvey with my opinion. Back to you at the desk. That wraps it up for today. For LACC TV, this is Jeff Morales. And I'm Angelo Knox. We'll see you on the flip side. Happy holidays from all of us here at LACC TV.